Yay. Oh. Hello. How do you Hi. like my hairdo today? Wow, it's so beautiful. This is your um, wig from your show that you did a long time ago. What show? The that 60s show. That, 60s. The play. The play at the at the college that you did. Oh no, it's not. Yes, it is. No, it's not. Mine was ginormous and it didn't belong to me. It belonged to the school. Oh, well, it was in a bag still. And I never bought this. Oh, I know which one that is. I think that's, I think I wore that for Halloween when I was a mime. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it was in the bag. And I just were you it. there when I did that? Mm -hmm. When I was trick or treating? I don't know if you if I went with you trick-or-treating how old were you uh it was when I was doing comedy sports oh probably so not I was probably 21 or something but um so it was really funny because we go knocking and trick-or-treating and I mimed having a, a trick-or-treat bag and so I people would open the door and people and the kids around would be like trick or treat and then I would be like <laughs> and then the people were like oh do you want me to like put a candy in your oh okay and so then the people <laughs> were like putting a candy in my invisible bag it just fell on the ground and then they totally laughed and then I'd pick it up and run away oh I think I remember you describing that yeah, I don't think you were there. I think um, I think that was not you that was there. Mm. I am drinking Aguas Frescas. Mm. Hibiscus Maybe we can juice. get them to sponsor us. By Minute Maid. Wow. Or, or I get in trouble. I don't know. It's either good or it's either bad. Who knows nowadays? What do you mean? Because sometimes you can't say the logo. Or oh. the, like, you know, like when you're doing a movie or something like that, sometimes you can't show that and then they put their finger over. Well, not if you're doing a podcast, they don't care. I don't know. Who knows nowadays? Cereal is bad for you. Toothpaste is bad for you. <laughs> Who knows? Nobody, nobody knows. That's why you got to go off grid and make a food forest. <gasps> mm. Have the chickens. You can't use a bug repellent. You have to get chickens and ducks so that they could eat the mosquitoes. Mm -hmm. But they poop, which brings bugs, which brings mosquitoes. So it's like a vicious circle. Mm. Never goes away. But the poop is the fertilizer. Yeah. So we're all here. Here we are. Here we are. It's the very first episode of Mind Probe with Mom. I want to insert some kind of cool music that's like alien ish later on. Like but the, the, I don't know. Yeah, exactly. Um, so <laughs> the first episode, let's do some introductions. Um, to start, I will introduce myself. My name is Amber Jean, and I am an actor, comedian, and astrologer slash wizard. Just very, very mystical. I have my own life coaching psychic business stuff like that um and then here is my mom she if you cannot see because you're listening to the podcast portion you mm. you would see my mom wearing a beautiful wig um not a wig i just went to the hair salon i said <laughs> it's not a wig it look it only looks fake um so i guess that was what you were going because it's called a perm which you guys are not familiar with <laughs> Okay. And then 
some very large glasses, which she says she wears those every day. And I, I do. didn't know that. Go look in my pictures. Go Let's look see. it up. Go look in a dictionary. <laughs> <laughs> and then our special guest today is Olivia. Wait, I have uh, have to introduce oh, yeah, yeah. myself. So I'm a CNA slash med tech, but I hate my job. So I just quit. And so I'm going to be done with that in two weeks and I'll become a healer. Ooh. So Wait. this podcast is going to be very mystical centric. Um, and let me tell you, okay, I'll just say we also, we have Olivia Ray here, Olivia, we're going to introduce you fully later on. So you just stay there looking cute in the background. (laughs) So yeah, for this first episode, I kind of just want to let people, our little audience know our, um, our sun moon risings. I think that's pretty, um, interesting, if you don't think it's interesting, it's because you haven't, on, you've only listened to this first episode and you don't know anything about cool mystical stuff yet. If you do know about cool mystical stuff, then here you go. My, okay, this is Amber talking. <laughs> and my sun is in Pisces, my rising is Aquarius, my moon is Aquarius, my Mercury is Aquarius. And then, mom, do you even know what you have? I have. Oh, wait, I have something here. No, no, no. Just tell me what you think. Nah, I don't know. Just like, <laughs> I'm just Aquarius. You know, your but sun it's sign. the best sign. So your sun doesn't sign matter. is Aquarius. And then your Mercury is also Aquarius. So you and I both have the same Mercury. And do you know what that means? Hmm. Hopefully, we don't get sick. Okay, then nope, it's not what that means. It, <laughs> the, your Mercury placement is how you talk. It's how you communicate. And um, I was kind of worried that our voices were gonna sound too similar for this podcast because we sound exactly the same. Yeah, we do not. I don't think so. Olivia, what do you think? You guys sound a lot alike. Yeah. It surprised me the first time I heard you talk. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a laugh, yeah. Yeah. Um, so I feel bad for our listeners trying to follow along if they don't know who's talking, whether it's me or my mom. Um, I just got to say, like, I don't know, too bad, sucker. <laughs> just got to try and guess, I guess. Um, and then my mom has, mom, do you know what your moon is? No. I think it's easy for you to guess. Uranus. No. What oh. sign? What zodiac sign is it in? My moon? Yeah. In Aquarius. Nope. It's in Leo. No. <laughs> no. It's Pisces. Oh. oh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't do that. Whatever it is. I've taught you so many times, but whatever. (laughs) And then um, your rising sign is, do you know? Wait, what's her moon? Her moon is Pisces. Oh, it is Pisces. Okay. That would have been, Pisces or Cancer would have been my guess. Oh, good guess. But I did already tell you what her moon was because you have the same moon sign. So yes. Mm. <laughs> Olivia over there, she's got a Pisces moon. And my mom has a Pisces moon. And I have an Aquarius moon. And then Let my me mom's write these things down so I can read up on it later because I don't know what the fuck you guys are saying. <laughs> Pisces moon, Taurus moon. No, your moon. rising is Taurus. My rising moon. Yeah. Okay, so um next I will talk about what our intentions were for this podcast. Um, my, me and my mom were talking on the phone and my mom was like, I never want to incarnate onto the earth ever again. I'm done incarnating. I hate incarnation onto earth. (laughs) And then I was like, well, you know, the, the whole reason why you and I are even here in the first place is because there's so many people on earth who need to awaken and we are here to kind of bring some of that you know 
and it was it was a much better conversation at, when we were talking and me summarizing it sounds really dumb but that was the gist and then my mom <clears throat> was saying oh i wish i could just teach all of my friends all of this mystical stuff but i don't know how to teach them anything and then i was like um and they're not going to be willing oh and then you said i should just have a podcast but yeah. i'm not gonna know what to say yeah and i'm gonna just like try and teach some stuff and they're not gonna even know anything i'm saying because i don't know how to say it <laughs> and then i was like oh well then i'll just do it with you and we can like have guests and stuff and so here we are it's called mind probe with mom and yeah and Olivia is the first one because I guest. said I was watching Olivia on one of her Instagram lives and she was talking for a bit and I was listening until she said something about the collective. And then I was like, well, I got lost. So I guess it's not for me. So I logged out. <laughs> Good to know. Olivia, my mom wants to know her first question that she jumped work. the gun about is she wants to know what the heck the collective even means. She, this whole episode, I think, is just going to be like some basics. She has some questions, just some random questions for you. And then I tried to get her to ask specifics about uh, your actual business, which um, so this is Olivia and her stage name is Olivia Ray right yeah and then I mean, my mom's stage it's name, my real name it is my real name it's just my first and middle name same my name's amber jean that is technically my first name did you know that full with no spaces it's got a hyphen in there i did not know that actually now you know Do you have a middle name yep louise oh i see okay. <laughs> we wanted olivia to talk about introduction to spirituality but then also to talk about what she's specifically good at which she is a wait actually Olivia personally asked me for my mom to be the one to introduce her because she wanted to hear what my mom thinks it is that she does so oh there you go that's interesting so Olivia Ray is here on the show and i'm not exactly sure what she does except that she came over to my daughter's house amber and uh gave my dog a healing session with some mind psychological like uh energy thing uh, they were having a talk between minds and then at the end of the session Lulu got a special little gift, which was like a little black charm of a stone, rose mm. quartz or onyx or something like that. I don't mm. remember. So that's how I met Olivia. But really, I just know that she does mystical, magical things that I don't really understand. And um, take it away, Olivia. <laughs> <laughs> Well, yes Olivia feel, tell us what you do I feel like talking about the session that we did with Lulu is such a good the way that you described it the mind psychological bit is actually a really good segue into your first question about the collective quote-unquote because that same energy that allows me to tap into the consciousness of animals is the same energy that shows up when I talk about things like the collective, right? Like we're, there's what, 7 billion people on the planet and we all have that same consciousness as animals. We're humans. So we are able to make meaning in a way that's different than animals, but at the core of it, we're consciousness experiencing something. And so when I'm saying the collective, I'm talking about like the collective field of all of our consciousnesses emanating together and while we're individuals we do have connection to that collective energy as well we're often playing out 
scenarios in our lives that mirror a lot of the collective because we're all Mm -hmm. separate but we're all here doing this human slash animal slash fly slash tree thing because yeah at the end of the day like we all come from the same source consciousness and somewhere along the line that source consciousness got split up and it wanted to experience itself in all these different little ways but we are all still connected and so when we tap into that like collect wait what is the word the collective yeah yeah it's like it's the thing that binds us and it's like an energy that we can tap into is that what you would do you agree with that yeah does that make sense yeah now summarize it all right so i'm thinking that if we if everybody was conscious about this what is this called this like thing that we're searching for what is this thing that we're all interested in crystals and all that metaphysical stuff and the stuff that we're talking about like what is the big word for this I think I'm gonna go even talking about deeper I don't understand I do I think what you're talking about is belonging I think that we're all on the planet to find a sense of belonging, to find the space where we feel safe, to just be who we really are. That's what it comes down to for me. Is All right. that what you're talking about, Mom? Well, I'm, I'm trying to find a word for, okay, so like there's metaphysics, there's people who are witches that believe in like paganism, uh, there's a uh, People it who sounds like, like you're all, everything you're describing is like divine feminine stuff. All right. So, anyways, all these beliefs that we are all interested, not the people that are not like have no idea what we're talking about, but the people who kind of have an inclination of what we're talking about. I think that Olivia just said that if we all are thinking on the same wavelength, then we're all awoken to this other dimension where we all connect. Is that right? I would mm-hmm. call out the part where you're limiting the collective to just people who are on the same wavelength as us right. so talking about these metaphysical things. Mm-hmm. Even if people are like super not into any of the woo-woo, they're part of that collective. They're still part of it, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> mm. Just they just don't know awoke. yet. They're not awakened to it. Okay. There's there. like this process of of like <laughs> forgetting after. Mm-hmm. So when you are a little spirit before you even incarnate. What? Yes. Okay. Can I? Okay, you go drink? with that, and then I'm just gonna um say something after. <laughs> Okay. Yay. So when you're a little spirit before you even incarnate, you know all that is because you are, you, there's no forgetting. Like there's a whole process uh, that we go through on earth where we purposefully pass through a veil and we forget everything. And there's a reason for that. It's, it's, like we chose this reality where we are so disconnected from source because it's a very cool way to learn things because it's like the hardest possible like realm yeah well it brings up you know my therapist today said that if you're not put up into a stressful situation it's very hard to realize what your strengths are so I think we could really apply that to why we would come into an incarnation that is as difficult as earth it helps us learn what we are focused on learning so when we're outside of the spectrum of being in a human body and there's a lot of density in a human body right yeah you're really stuck um pain is hard for humans to move through at this point in our collective journey 
so when you come into the context of a human body, you're kind of putting yourself in this pressure cooker on some level so that you can really learn what you're good at and, and what your gifts mm-hmm. are. And I think that kind of ties back to what we were talking about earlier, where you were, you, you were just saying something about, um, you know, people, people finding the things they like in this realm of, of thinking. Um, and I think until we're kind of put in those uncomfortable situations where we have to really choose like what it is we love and enjoy and what we're interested in and who we are, um, it can be easy to to have your energy so pulled in a million different directions. And I do think that when we can really focus our energy on what we choose to create, um, life gets a lot more fun. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, like uh, in the morning, instead of watching news, which um, I know a lot of people do, I put on YouTube and I'll like listen to Michael Sandler. I don't know if you know who that is. Mm -hmm. Uh, He talks about like cool stuff to do with like angels and things like that. Or I'll watch um, some other stuff that like where I'm learning something because on the news, you're not learning anything. Unless it's the weather and you're in a hurricane, then you're learning to get out of there. Good point. Did <laughs> Olivia answer your question, Mom? Yeah. All right. <laughs> what was what else you got up your sleeve? Oh, so wait, I was gonna say something. So when I was a little girl, like I don't know how old I was, but I just remember like at a time where I was playing with other kids. And for some reason, this thought came into my head and it would come to me like every few years and it would say, you're this, this is your image of what your life is, but really it's not your life. It's your life and you're choosing how to make it, but it's just like an image. You're choosing the things that are coming to you. So I already had that for years and years but it would go away and then like what was the image it was it was just like something would it would show me by myself on the planet and everything around me that's going on is how I pictured it to be like I'm making what's happening around me yeah that is how it works yeah so ever since then I've always been into astrology magical thingies crystals Mm -hmm. stuff like that but never knew to this point like how more advanced things are getting you know like people are like trying to figure out like the fifth dimension and all these dimensions when that happened to you what were you thinking as a kid I was thinking like when I liked the thought so I would try to stay in that thought, but the outside. Were you thinking like, I'm creating my reality? Like, was that the thought? Yeah. Like, it was like an echo. Like, somebody was talking in my head telling me this. Oh. It was weird, but I liked the feeling of it. So I was like, trying to be like, oh yeah, keep talking. But that's all I would say. What did you think it was at that time? I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Olivia, what was that? Uh, I would say that that's a spirit guide of some sort. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Or yeah, I, it would it would come I, every couple of years? Like I would get back into life, and then it would come back like years later. Remember me? <laughs> Here we are again. I'm gonna tell you. It looks, like, it looks like a loved one from a past life where mm-hmm. you kind of had an agreement to help each other advance spiritually Ooh. like that being was not incarnated in a body and when we're not in a body we have access to so so much so it looks like that being would kind of come and, and work with you mm. cool yeah. yeah so olivia we didn't even ask you what you even do <laughs> yeah we just went with whatever my I mom guessed. said <laughs> <laughs> well I, I explain how I do different, uh, what I do differently every time I talk about it. So, 
you it's know, all clients and it's stuff. Almost, it's almost better for people to form their own meaning mm. what I do. Interesting. <laughs> but I work, I work in, I work as a psychic medium. I work in the realm of energy. Um, nice. Yeah. Yeah, we got a little so, taste. A little since taste she's pie. talking about that, I want to say, okay, so she would know this answer. Can I ask a question now? Yeah. So why do some people or beings seek for answers on topics to do with like metaphysics, astrology, Wiccan, paganism, magic realms, fifth dimension, et cetera, et cetera, and some don't even have a clue about what we're talking about what we're watching they don't have any interest about it what's the deal with that (laughs) what is the deal (laughs) what comes up first is it just has to do with what the individual is on this planet to learn so Mm -hmm. there are some individuals who are just here to learn how to like build resources right so you would see that in people who really are not interested in the metaphysical aspect of life they're interested in like the very practical Mm -hmm. building wealth building businesses all of these things and I would say that there are a lot of people who are who fall on both parts of the spectrum and then there are people whose purpose in this lifetime is really to develop spiritually and I would say that a lot of the time those people can have such an emphasis on the metaphysical in the karma that they're completing and in what they're here to learn and work on that the physical can sometimes be so so disconnected for them that often like we we see it very often people who are really spiritual but but struggle with uh more like practical things in life mm. um so I, I really would say it's just about, you know, what is the spirit here to learn in this mm-hmm. life? And yeah, maybe some of those people, they are here to learn the spiritual stuff, but that's just not um, that part of their journey yet. And they're going to get there on their own time. Or maybe not. Or maybe not. Maybe not mm-hmm. at all. It's not part of their journey at all. And uh, that's something that I think about a lot, like, when people are upset like everybody should be caring about this thing it's like there's so many billions of people on this earth and we're all here to do different jobs we are like we all have like there's so many different perspectives there's billions of perspectives that exist and that's why there's that many people that have incarnated is to experience those different perspectives and it wouldn't be fun if everybody had the same perspective uh what made you even ask that question you know because people she was just well yeah i noticed people like i have friends let me see I think I want to say I have like two friends that understand like about spirits, spirituality, like, you know, a higher level than what there just is, which is like, you know, their religion and that's it. Mm -hmm. I have like two friends and then everybody Mm -hmm. else is like, you know. And so you're wondering she's, why she's you're doing all the weird stuff and they're just doing all the normal stuff? Yeah. <laughs> why? <laughs> well, because your astrology chart has a bunch of Aquarius and Pisces stuff is what I would say. Yeah. And mm. with, you know, when I look at a spirit, they, you had a specific, we call it a mock-up for what you wanted to learn in this lifetime. And that mock-up plays a part in in who you are but then there's also like especially if we're like sitting here talking about what we're talking about you've lived so many lives before this so it's like you have the mock-up for this lifetime and then you have all the karma from previous lifetimes that you're also playing out so I would venture to assume that you have been a player in a lot of lifetimes where there was spirituality at the center of it 
Mm. So in this lifetime, you're kind of looking to find answers about things that maybe went unanswered or unresolved in those lifetimes. Mm -hmm. Um, Are you able to like tune into past lives and stuff, Olivia? Oh, yeah. Ooh. (laughs) I actually just taught my students how to read past lives last night. Do you pick up on it right away or do you have to like go into a meditation or something? Um, I typically don't, it would be like tuning in to a specific person and then pulling out those past lives. Mm-hmm. What does that even mean? Yeah, it's, it's a way of, first of all, getting permission to work in someone's energy field, which is such an important piece of doing energy work. Um, and then also like focusing in right when you're sensitive and you you know most of the sensitive people I work with they've been reading energy their whole lives they just didn't realize that so when you learn to train that ability Mm. to read energy you learn to direct what you're reading so tuning in is like pulling up a particular person and starting to read that That's an interesting point too, that a lot of people are psychic and and they just pick up on stuff and they don't know what's going on with them. And that even makes me think of my mom. Cause she like, I remember, um, when we were living in San Mateo and, uh, my mom was like, um, I keep smelling this vanilla perfume in Mm. my bedroom and I think it's you remember a ghost. that. Yeah, of course I remember that. If my mom tells me there's a ghost in the house, I'm gonna I forgot. Remember it. <laughs> yeah, and I, I and I never picked up on any of that. So I would like sometimes I would walk in there and I'd be like, "Is there a vanilla perfume in here?" And it never. Yeah, that's right. And after Lulu died, I smelled her farts for like a couple weeks. <laughs> And she was still farting. <laughs> and it was only sure at night. It wasn't you? No, no. it was Lulu's fart. Real. What, Olivia? That's very real, yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. You've got a, um, a got psychic a nose. nose. That, yes, I do. That's a, that is a psychic sense. Mm-hmm. For and when somebody that I know likes to I could say like I don't know they are like in charge of the conversation basically I want to say um or somebody that you know just is not really that interesting to talk to or something I don't know I just get this sense of like oh they're just gonna drain my energy right now but I have to be nice and I have to answer the phone anyways and so I'll be like hello (laughs) but I don't want to talk yeah, you have to learn how to have uh, boundaries with your own energy. Mm. That's yeah. a whole nother topic. Yeah. <laughs> Olivia, so. how did you get started? And I kind of know this answer because I met you at that time. But tell our people how you got started with all this psychic stuff. Honestly, don't really know. It just was an interest that kind of became a special a special interest that took over my whole life um because I was really good at it um I'm trying to remember like the first I don't know woo woo thing I I I got interested in but I really (laughs) I guess it would have been crystals I started Mm -hmm. by well I guess actually it was my bulldog Eleanor we went on a trip and uh, that was probably the most independent thing that I had ever done. And well, that's not true, but anyway, um, <laughs> I ended up in Solvang and went to the crystal shop there and just like, was like, what are these crystals? I don't know anything about crystals. And I bought like a bunch of little tiny ones and it just kind of ballooned from there. Mm-hmm. I had a crystal collection when I was what, six? I feel like yeah. that's the first thing you and I connected on. Like you were like, do you want to see crystals? Yeah. I, well, that's how I would have said that to a person who didn't care about crystals at all. I was still forced it on them. <laughs> Autism. 
I have autism. Um, my mom has a crystal shop too. For anybody who's looking to get some crystals, you know where it's at. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's going to be in another town near you, not in this town. Nobody uh, even knows where you are. <laughs> <laughs> That's because I live in the middle of nowhere. Oh, we didn't even introduce your your cool name. Star Rhodes. Yeah, this is my mom. Star Rhodes. You can follow me on Star's Portal on Instagram. I asked my mom, do you have a, a stage name do you that you want to be called? Because you know. What happens if we get totally famous from this podcast? And then what's your name that you want everybody to know? And she's like, star. It's like, oh, okay. Because star. we come from stardust. So I know, but I didn't even know that that was something that you wanted. So to be- here, can we explain people that? Well, I know that we come from stardust, but when you say that, how do you explain it to somebody who does not understand what I'm saying? All right, Olivia, that's all you, baby. There you go. <laughs> I don't know how to answer that. Well, yeah, I mean, the place that we go when we leave the body is beyond the earth plane. Mm-hmm. So that is kind of how I would equate that saying that we come from stardust. Mm -hmm. Um, Does that, is that too simple? Yeah, no, that's very simple and good because my friend Courtney, that was one of her questions. Where do we go when we die? We, so we have a segment that we're going to introduce to the podcast and it's called the segment is called a question from my friend Courtney. <laughs> that was her question <laughs> to ask you. And, and so, so she you just answered Courtney. it. And, and she can weird. only get simple answers because if you okay. go into detail. I could, I could go more specific with it, but yeah. And, you know, it can take a spirit. Like my grandma passed in February and she's very much still on the earth side as a spirit. She hasn't quite made that transition into that space where we go to really start to take our next steps into whether we're just going to exist as a spirit for a while, or maybe that spirit is going to take the lessons from the lifetime that they've ended and go back into another lifetime. I don't know, in this galaxy or another one, right? We really, we, we don't know, like, and the options are endless um so when we die I think or I I know rather because I've seen it for for a lot of spirits who have witnessed go through that transition we kind of start to collect up our energy and we collect it up out of the spaces Mm -hmm. of the people that we love right um we collect it up out of like the places that we've been we kind of start to pull our energy back so that we can take it into that next step where we can really learn the lessons from this. What's the logistics of that? Cause that's interesting. You think that you collect your own energy. Yeah. I mean, think about when you're in a body, unless you have immaculate energetic hygiene, your energy yeah. is probably still at the grocery store or you know, in the guy that you have a crush on in his aura Mm -hmm. or, you know, whoever you're thinking about, you're sending your energy to their space. Right. So like my grandmother who loved to pray and worry about me (laughs) having to call so much of her energy out of my space, out of my mom's space. Um, and she, she was involved in a lot of people's lives. So she, when she transitioned, she was doing a lot of going around and you know pulling her energy back from the people who she had blessed and so loved. what if you were like a hermit or a grump and you die and 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 yeah. yeah what about that honestly I think the transition the transitional period between pulling your energy out of the lifetime that had ended and into the next step that you're going to take would be so much quicker and maybe that's why those people choose to live lives like that. Maybe that's mm. a lesson that they're here to learn. 
Ooh, that's a cool thought. <laughs> what? I didn't get it. <laughs> the hermit ah. part? Yeah, what about that? Like, What, what? about what? The like the her- so if he's a hermit or a grumpy person, so he the gets to advance? The reason I, no, 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 no. The reason I asked that was because her grandma was very involved in, 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 she was giving her energy away to all these different people. She was worrying about them. And so whenever you're worrying about, it's like, you're directing your energy at them. It's like, you're giving a piece of your energy over to somebody else. And so I asked, what if you're a grump and what if you're a hermit and you're just never like sending your energy at people, unless you're like angry, then you're probably, you're still sending your energy at the things that you're angry about. So I, I would wonder about that. But then Olivia is saying like, yeah, maybe that's why he incarnated as a hermit is to learn that lesson of like keeping your energy in like confined into your own space. Like that might have been a lesson. Yeah. And not having the karma of needing to mask to meet other people's expectations. Because I think we can kind of separate the hermit from the grump. I think those are two separate archetypes. The hermit might be perceived as a grump because they're not masking to meet right. other expectations. Mm-hmm but they would have like a very clear energy field if they're not attached to anyone in this lifetime. Like yeah. you come into this lifetime and you don't, you know, have kids or make connections. You don't really have any karma to tie up. So it would kind of be a way to stop incarnating on some level. If that, if that was the step that you were looking to do. My mom's trying to not incarnate ever again. I don't know. I don't know. (laughs) I don't know. Well, I had kids. So it's too late for me. Yeah. You might have a little bit more karma after this lifetime. No, I refuse. (laughs) Well, you don't know what you know. I know that that's going to be my last word. Come back. <laughs> I'll put it on your headstone. Don't come back. No, there's. I'm not going in the ground either. Remember? I that? know, but you, and you need a headstone, don't you? No, we'll just get like a like a little thing and just engrave it or something like a little necklace. All right. Put some ashes and in there. This leads me to ask you, Olivia, what do you want your family to do when you die? Just kidding. That wasn't the question. Well, now I'm thinking <laughs> about it. <laughs> I never really put much energy into thinking about it, to be honest. I mean, my oh, mom's please. always talking about it. She literally oh. talked about it twice already today. Oh, all right. Can I ask another question here? Yes. Yeah. All right. <laughs> so, uh, what does a calcified penile, penile, however you say it, gland do? Peen. Peen? Neal? Mm-hmm. Peneal? Just peen. It's not peneal? <laughs> gland do. Yeah. And how do you know it's calcified? Do you peen need to get gland. an x-ray? That is a can of worms, that question. Um Let's because see. don't psychic people have to have their pineal gland opened yeah let's start with what even is it yeah so the pineal gland is part of the hormonal system so i think from a technical level when the pineal gland is decalcified which just means that like it's it's moving energy through it that's kind of how i would say is if someone's pineal gland is decalcified, they're able to process energy through that space. And doesn't that gland create like DMT and like psychic hormones and stuff? So yeah, I think DMT is the, <clears throat> is the hormone created by the pineal gland. Yeah, so you so, want it to be operating at its peak so that you can do all the psychic stuff. I would say yes, and if someone blasts open their pineal gland before they're ready to see. Mm-hmm it can be really scary yeah and that's the uh wait what's it called the kundalini awakening what is it called kundalini kundalini Kundalini. are you talking about (laughs) the kundalini awakening is not my area of expertise it's definitely something that originated in um eastern mysticism but that's kind of like a spinal more of like the spinal fluid awakening up the spine Mm -hmm. i understand it and it definitely that 
you know, it's hormones running up the spine. So it can definitely play a part in the Mm -hmm. pineal gland. Yeah. I read that, um, your pineal gland, um, if it's like totally blasted open, then yeah, that's gonna create a kundalini awakening. And yeah, the kundalini energy is in the spine. So there's got to be some connection somehow there. I love having a microphone that I can okay, whisper. Okay, wait, into. but how do you even blast a pineal gland? <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I, I want to I wanna really say like, this is not my area of expertise at yeah. all. Um, so she just I- uses it. And she doesn't yeah. have any- yeah, I mean, I would say that yes, my pineal gland is awakened. Um, and I would say the way that I did that is through, you know, for seven years I've been practicing mm-hmm. the ability to just sit and meditate and look at energy in the center of my head. Um, mm-hmm. which is the pineal gland. And I actually Googled, I just Googled what hormone does the pineal gland release, and it's melatonin, which I think oh. is really interesting interesting. because in order to like sit in the center of your head and read energy you have to be in your body has to be able to relax so Mm -hmm. just like intuitively I'm kind of realizing that the training that I've done in meditation has probably trained me to be able to drop in and like start to tell my body to produce the melatonin that makes me feel like relaxed enough to be able to sit for literally like two to three hours and just look at energy Mm -hmm. Um, to kind of answer the question of like how to awaken the pineal gland I personally think that the reason that I started to kind of get into spirituality and have a spiritual awakening is because I went vegan for a couple months back in 2016 or maybe it was even 2015 it was right around the time that I moved to LA because I met a hot guy and I was like, and he was trying veganism and I was like, oh, well, I'm going to try veganism. Um, (laughs) But it, it really like cleared out so much of the density that had been stuck. And I kind of had a spiritual awakening. My first spiritual awakening, I would say after that, where I just started to realize um, kind of what you said earlier, like our reality is a picture that we look through. Um, and we're kind of the ones who get to decide how we want to see that picture or what picture we even want to be looking through when we Mm -hmm. relate to life. Um, so I would say to decalcify the pineal gland, being mindful of like what you're putting into your body and probably Mm -hmm. doing some form of cleanse that's going to let your body kind of reset and release from all the chemicals. Cause I was like vegan organic and that really like, yeah. Clean water, no things that aren't going to add excess like calcium going to the wrong places. Like I know a lot of people say like fluoride is yeah, calcifying. I've heard cacao um, is really good for decalcifying um, as well. What cacao? Um, it's like the what they use to chocolate, the chocolate mm-hmm. form of it. Hmm. Okay, what's your other question, mom? <clears throat> Oh, so I asked those three, but this other one on my phone, let me access it. Go ahead. Talk amongst yourselves. Oh, all right. Well, my question for you, Olivia, is so when it comes to the people who are, oh, they're kind of interested in all this uh, mystical woo woo stuff, but they've got some resistance and stuff and they're like, I don't really know if I want to deep dive into that. What's the appeal for someone to actually do the work, to actually shed that resistance and try some new things? I think the question comes down to, do you want to know yourself? Ooh, you know, a lot of people don't. They're scared. Scared. It's scary. There's so much fear around that because it's like, oh God, what am I going to uncover? Who am I going to, you know, I think a big fear that comes up for people is like, what's going to happen to my relationships? because Mm. once you start to set boundaries things change in relationships and setting boundaries is a huge part of getting to know yourself and what resistances did you have um bro I don't think I did I was crazy I was like I was like yeah let's it was the only thing I cared about to be honest like I I realized that I could 
learn how to read energy, which is how I had been perceiving the world my whole life anyway, through the information I got from energy. And I was just like, how do I, how do I get more of this? How do I do this all the time for someone who's not as, because my motivation was really like, how do I learn to understand the world? It wasn't necessarily, how do I learn to understand myself? So I think if someone's mm. motivation is strictly just to get to know themselves, there can be a lot of resistance that comes up because mm -hmm. it's so personal. I was so utterly obsessed with knowing myself. <laughs> That's why I went into astrology instead of going hard into other areas. Yeah, because I wanted to understand why the fuck do I do this and 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 I wanted to understand other people too and I wanted to understand the patterns of how energetics like how how the world even works and so that's why I went into astrology. Mm. Olivia, we never even said what your sun moon rising are. Oh, I am an Aries sun. I mean, Amber could, uh, Amber could tell you. I could tell your whole chart to this audience <laughs> without even looking at my phone. Um, a Virgo <laughs> rising and a Pisces moon. Yeah. Now everybody knows. Mom, do you have your final question for Olives? I think you kind of asked it already because you just said, but it was basically like about... You know, like how some there's children psychics out there and they can see like dead people or whatever shadows, they hear things, see things, but then there's people like say, for instance, Olivia, who for seven years wanted to develop this um, gift that she already knew she had, but she had to work on it. So yeah. How does that happen? How do some people just get it? Uh, that's a good mm. question. Um, so I was raised in a really religious home. <laughs> so that ability to physically see energy got really shut down in my childhood. There was no permission to be able to physically see energy. Um, in fact, like it was very taboo, right. To even mm -hmm. have access to that type of information mm -hmm. so for me, it really got shut down and suppressed. And most of my journey in training was kind of peeling back the layers of where I had shut down the, the ability to see things physically in the world. I think often in instances where children are able to see things and have those natural abilities so young there's a nurturing that's happening for that ability often the parent is if if not at least open to it and like wanting to help the child explore that they're even like curious with them and like wanting to know more um there was an instance in my childhood where my very religious grandmother, man, grandma is present for this podcast. <laughs> oh, what up, grandma? Hello. Yeah. Hey, hey Liz. Um, Olivia, your hair looks nice. <laughs> <laughs> she, I saw something and she, you know, she was raised in the Appalachian mountains. Like I know she oh, saw this some spooky up. stuff. Um, <laughs> and I think for her own safety and survival, she had to turn that off. Mm. so I was raised by her a lot of my childhood my parents worked full-time so I was at their house a lot um you know I think any of those kind of inclinations towards me being like what's that were immediately squashed like it was it's nothing mm. like you don't talk about that mm -hmm. um so I think it's a combination of like is there a nurturing for those abilities in childhood but also is there already a fear and resistance to those abilities in the caretakers that's going to immediately shut those things down. Hmm. I'd also add that 
I think there is a great deal of planning that goes on before you even incarnate as to how thick the veil is going to be for you. I think that there's um, some people that they choose before they even come here that I'm going to have a really psychic incarnation. And so I need to develop my skills early on. And so I'm just going <clears> to <throat> incarnate with a, a thinner veil where I can tap into stuff really easily. And maybe my family is more supportive. And so it doesn't get shut down. And it's just really strong. Okay. I have one more question to go off of that. So say if everybody was tuned in, turned on, tapped in, whatever, <laughs> And everybody was on the same level of consciousness and they all believe the same thing. What would happen? It would be boring. No, I don't think so. <laughs> would this earth have all the problems that it would have? It wouldn't. I mean, what comes up for me is like, it wouldn't be earth. <laughs> yeah. There are um, other places that they uh, there's well, a collective consciousness that they all and like uh what's her name the, the lady that you listen to all the time mom mm -hmm. the, oh uh esther hicks extra hicks yeah the, like the the being that is being channeled goes by they but it's actually a whole collective of beings that's just like raw yeah she goes by they also yeah and Sorry there's to... also, there's such a benefit to the earth realm. Like we, while, yeah, there are definitely collectives of beings who are operating in that like oneness that, that they're all on the same playing field energetically and spiritually. It's not as physical for most of them. It's not as physical. And so like part of the beauty of being on earth is we get to really like enjoy the physical stuff, which I know as crystal girlies, we, we like that <laughs> shit. <Yeah. laughs> but part of, part of the really big limit on earth is our language. Like particularly the English language is so flat energetically. When, when I, so I, I do healing work. Um, and when I'm in that healing work, I don't speak much because it actually stops the healing energy. Once we go back into our human part of the brain, that's right. trying to define and understand and intellectualize what's happening as the energy is moving, it can shut down the healing potential. Um, mm. so I think a huge piece of like elevating the consciousness on earth is starting to take the emphasis on verbal communication back a little bit where we can recognize that like we're all much more connected to one another when we're aware of the nonverbal communication that's happening there's that's why like animals are so pure because they don't have words they can't bypass what's in the energy by talking yeah. about something that is you know maybe like a total totally off what's actually happening um humans can kind of like tell whatever story they want with words and yeah. train themselves to ignore their bodies and I think that's where a lot of the problems on the planet come from that's mm. so interesting uh, never thought of that before well it seems like we've come to our natural conclusion um for this episode Love it. um what i love it oh okay thank you um thank you to olivia ray for being our very first guest on our podcast i am so grateful that she came and i uh just want to open the door for olivia to share what she's got coming up thank you yeah if you know i am trained in a very niche understanding of the way that energy works. And it's a form of energy work that allows you to really become neutral to the stories that the body wants to tell and just read the energy. And 
as someone who's dabbled in a lot of spiritual modalities, the healing that happens in that space of just seeing a spirit where they're at is really incredible. Um, so I now teach that my business partner and I are starting the second round of our psychic training in October. Mm -hmm. So if anyone is like, yeah, I want to learn how to read and relate to the world of energy. Um, message me on Instagram. Yay. So it's nothing like Reiki though, right? Love. You know, Reiki is a, a form of energy healing where you are being initiated into a certain set of healing codes, if we could call them that. Mm -hmm. The healing work that I teach, and, and it does start with reading the energy before learning to mm -hmm. heal so that you can really separate yourself and, and see the energy that you're engaging with. It allows you to have more of a um, awareness of what's happening. I think with Reiki, there's a lot of like healings just coming through me. With yeah. the work that I teach, it's like, I'm seeing the energy move. I'm seeing where you're working the energy. I'm watching you release this. It's not healing is coming through me. It's I'm seeing where you're at and that's empowering you to heal yourself. Oh, that's great. Thank yeah. You. <laughs> if I were to take what you just said and put it in my own words, it's like Reiki is more the practitioner putting energy onto the other person. And then what you're doing is more um, observing and reflecting and guiding. Yeah. What I would so that would be kind of like, you know, where some people are cutting cords and stuff. Is that the same in, in what you do In what you do? It happens naturally things mm -hmm. like cords releasing. And sometimes of course you're like, Oh, I see a cord. And, you know, I see you starting to clear a yellow around where that cords really connected. And then as that yellow comes out, the cord releases. So I would say, don't cut cords. Cause you know, if you cut something, then the root of that is still in there. It's like, how can you witness the energy that created the cord in the first place and hold space for that to release itself because you're witnessing it. Mm. That's deep. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. That's All right. pretty deep, everybody. Thanks for coming on <laughs> by to this deep old combo. Well, oh. Olivia, thank you. That is... Um, Who's going to be on the show next? Oh, uh, I'm at oliviaray.love on Instagram and TikTok. I see yes. Olivia Ray at Olivia. That's great. No, that's not what she said. What's she saying? Uh, oliviaray.love. That is also my website. Oh. But it's, I see it right here on the bottom of the screen. Oh yeah, that's, that's my name and then my handle. Oh, okay. So mom, what did you learn? Um, I learned more about what Olivia does, which makes me want to actually maybe when I get a little bit of money, join the class. Yeah, you would love it. It's really I would fun. love it because in the end, I want to actually help others with their healing, working as a CNA is you see so much sadness and just they're so weak and they're so frail. And then you see people that work for them are like spread so thin that they don't have any time to like give them except for that short amount of time they have until they go on to the next person. So I want to be able to like, just be there the whole time, like with, even if they have like some kind of brain injury, I want to be able to like, maybe their brain can still connect with me, even though, you know, so I would oh, like to would help say their spirit can still connect with mm -hmm. you. spirit. Okay. Yeah. See, I'm learning wrong <laughs> words. This will be fun to like keep doing these episodes and then like if we did this for a long time and then to look back and see how much you've grown from because each episode we're going to have a different expert on to teach my mom something different mm -hmm. and it's not always going to be spiritual stuff sometimes it's going to be, be an alien 
sometimes it'll be a real live alien <laughs> in the room and my boobies. you're gonna want to tune into that you're gonna want to see what that's all about I can't thank wait. you everybody thank you olivia <laughs> thank you mom thank you uh, i'm waving like the queen of the world thank you so much oh, we love you and we think you're great okay bye goodbye bye. <laughs> and now it's just me i can't believe those people were here when i was just trying doing oh god this is so dumb anyways bye